quarantiners. Welcome back to the new show. I'm Random Rob. So last week I gave some love to The Complex, uh, a recent FMV title published by Wales Interactive. So the other night I perused their catalog of titles and I thought a game called The Bunker looked interesting. So I sat down to play it. Well if I was dumping love on The Complex, I'm going to be dumping some hate on The Bunker because the bunker was so bad it actually made me make up a list of what I'm calling Random Rob's Seven Deadly Sins of FMV Games. To briefly recap the plot of the bunker, you are John, a 30-something man-child who has grown up in a large underground fallout shelter that had a population of, I think, 58 people, uh, civilians and government workers. As the game begins, John is being born. It is the late 1960s. A nuclear war is happening. Thirty-some years later, where the game starts, John is the last survivor living in the bunker. And you begin the game going through John's day-to-day -day routine of eating, checking his radiation, making sure the equipment in the bunker is functioning properly, and so forth. So far, so good until one of the ventilation units breaks down and John has to go to the lower levels, put on a radiation suit, and fix the filter. And this is where things go from bad to worse in the narrative and where the game really goes from bad to worse. I was enraged by the time I was done with this game. So let's get into the things it did wrong. My seven deadly sins of FMV games. Number one, forcing a player to choose the inoperative choice in order to make the right choice appear. The bunker does this at several places. There's a part where John has something in his pocket which he can use to jimmy a latch to open this hatch in the floor. John doesn't remember he can use this object in that way until you try the door that you can't open. Only then does the option to use this item in your inventory to open this other hatch appear. It's stupid. Prolongs the game and takes me out of the game. Number two, sudden death quick time events that reset the chapter you're playing. Forcing you to rewatch some lengthy scene to get to the one point that you fucked up last time. And artificially expands the length of the game and is annoying. <laughs> you know, if you're an FMV game, you do not want to be annoying and tedious at the end. That's when you're going for maximum engagement with the player, not least amount of engagement. Which leads me to sin number three. And this goes for any game, not just FMV games. Repeatedly tapping buttons to have to do something is not fun. It's not fun! Stop doing that. You know, it's okay here and there if you're supposed to be like, I don't know, you know, shaking somebody or you have to turn a car wheel quickly or something to avoid an obstacle, but repeatedly using quick button taps. Don't do that. I mean, at the end of this game, you're doing quick button taps to get John to overcome his anxiety. I cannot think of, of a worse game mechanic for that. In fact, I'm not sure there should be a game mechanic for overcoming anxiety. Maybe just like in real life, uh, take a deep breath, close your eyes, wait for a moment for the feeling to pass. Sin number four. Flashback sequences that are more interesting than the game you're playing. The big problem with the bunker. The backstory is a lot more interesting. Also, it has a lot of actors and characters and things going on, and you're like, oh, I wish I could play that game. Honestly, I don't know why they didn't just set the story with John as a kid. It would have been a much more ironic and frightening ending, leaving John in the bunker to face the next, you know, 20 years by himself. Sin number five. Shortchanging the player on a puzzle and forcing them to do trial and error to solve it. There is a keypad puzzle. Numeric keypad, you have to enter four numbers. You see in a flashback sequence your mother pressing the numbers, but you don't know what the numbers were. However, your mother had blood on her fingers, so there's blood on three of the keys. So you know those keys were part of the code, but you don't know what the fourth button is. Added to which, I overanalyze things anyway, so my first thought was, 
How do I know she didn't hit one of those keys twice? You don't know. It turns out that the three bloodstained numbers were part of the code and there was one more number from one of the non-bloody keys. Which means that the developers expected you to do trial and error that scene and either guess what the fourth number was, assuming you knew it was one of the non-bloody keys to begin with, Again, this was near the end of the game. You don't want to force the player in an FMV game into tedious behavior at the end of the game. That's disengaging them. It makes them not want to play. It makes them feel like you're artificially extending the length of the game. Sin number six, not allowing the character to do an obvious action in a certain sequence. There's kind of a horrific scene in the bunker where John breaks his arm and gets a compound fracture, and he goes to the medical bay and makes a splint for his arm. After this sequence, I thought, okay, now let's get some painkillers for that arm. But an alarm goes off, and John just immediately starts reacting to this new alarm in this state of panic and pain. Now, according to the lore, the population of the bunker had died decades ago, leaving all of the remaining supplies to John, including 20 plus years of food and presumably 20 plus years of medical supplies, including painkillers. I don't care how many alarms are going off. If I have a compound fracture, I'm going to be looking for some painkillers. It just seemed like an excuse to have the character of John be in pain and miserable to make the game more scary. But to me, it just made it more annoying. And finally, sin number seven, going out on a whimper. An FMV game should have a punchy ending. The bunker doesn't have one. From the beginning, I personally was waiting for an M. Night Shyamalan type ending where it turned out that no nuclear war had actually happened and this was part of a war game and that for reasons unknown, this bunker full of people was forgotten about by the army through some sort of comedy of errors had just been forgotten about. John escapes the bunker, but you have no idea what happens after that. It just ends. It's just, just really weak. You know, if you're going to have a story that's about, like, nightmarish stuff and suffering, you can at least have some kind of warmth at the ending. And this, too, is a minor note, and it relates to, for example, having to mash keys to make John get over as a, his anxiety. Having really obvious character traits, like anxiety or PTSD for, for the main character, in my view, is a hindrance for FMV games. FMV games work best in my opinion, when the main character is a blank slate and has as few character traits as possible. You know, that allows that character to be an avatar for the player. I mean, while I was playing the game, I wasn't feeling like, oh, this bunker is really scary. Oh, I gotta tap this button to make him get over his anxiety. All I was thinking was, I really would like to go downstairs and not have this scene take five minutes because John keeps freaking out. Again, it's just something that was causing a, a disconnect for me as a player. My desire to explore was being hindered by this characteristic of the main character that really had no payoff. When you find out why John has PTSD and anxiety over what happened in the bunker decades ago, you don't feel any pity for him. In fact, if anything, you feel loathing for him. John and his mother are not nice people. And that brings me to another minor point. I would never have any reason to play this game again. I wouldn't want to, nor would I want to recommend it. Just a depressing slog with crappy FMV gameplay mechanics. I, I cannot believe this game won awards. So what are some annoying gameplay tropes that drive you nuts? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked what you heard, press the like button and subscribe and consider becoming a patron of the new show. Okay, this is Random Rob for the new show. Signing off. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.